Hello, my name is Aaron Barr, and I'm a jazz trumpet player, composer, and music educator, and this is Trumpet Chops, my new series dedicated to trumpet practice and technique. So if you're a trumpet player like me, who's just trying to get a little bit better at this bear of an instrument, you're in the right place. Today, I want to talk about something that's incredibly important for all trumpet players who want to see regular growth on their instrument, and that is creating a regular practice routine. Every trumpet player has a different idea of what they want to sound like. Some of us want to be great lead players. Some of us want to be great jazz players. Some of us want to be great studio players. So depending on what you want to sound like and what you want to do with this instrument, you're going to practice a little bit differently. So without much further to do, today we're going to talk about creating your own practice routine for the trumpet. So that you can create your own individualized practice routine, I have here for you a menu of different exercises you can use, organized into different families and subfamilies of trumpet practice. Uh, if you're interested in this menu, you can find the PDF on my website for free. Uh, there on my website, you can also find an inquiry form if you're interested in private lessons or uh, also many materials on jazz improvisation from my other YouTube videos. So here we have our different families of trumpet practice. To start with, we have warm-ups. These are all exercises that help set the stage for our future practice or performance. Uh, we have calisthenic exercises. These are exercises that help develop our flexibility or endurance. Uh, then we have technique exercises. These are exercises that would help us get around in different keys and help with velocity and cleanliness. Uh, we have range exercises, everyone's favorite exercises for developing that upper range. Um, then we have music, of course, which is really important for working on our expression as well as everything else, frankly. Uh, then we have improvisation for those of us who want to be great jazz players as well as trumpet players. And then we have warm downs. Uh, these are exercises that help to relax our chops at the end of a practice session. Here you'll see different subfamilies of warm up exercises. Um, as I hope you're aware, warm up exercises are intended to bring blood and sensation to the lips in order to prepare us for our day's playing. Uh, for that reason, we want to usually do these very low, quiet, and easy so that we don't damage our chops before we've had a chance to warm up. So uh, first of all, we can do long tone exercises where we hold notes nice and easy for a long time. We could do lip slurs where we're moving between different ranges of the instrument. Uh, again, nice and easy. Um, we could also do scale exercises. Um, and then some of my favorites are bends or pedal tones. Uh, if you're not familiar with either of these kinds of exercises, uh, bends are families of exercises where you, uh, within a single partial, try to chromatically alter your note down by a half step and come back up. Um, and then pedal tones are exercises where we move down below the natural range of the trumpet, so below that F sharp, below the staff. Um, I'm hoping to do some future content delving into both of those exercises and some other exercises that uh, you might not have heard of on the trumpet before that I consider to be really important for developing uh, strength and technique at the instrument. So um, if you'd be interested in that kind of content, uh, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you'll see when I release those future videos. Now we have different subfamilies of calisthenic exercises. These are exercises that are specific to working on flexibility and endurance. Um, to start with, we have lip slurs. Lip slurs are, I believe, an integral part of anyone's daily practice. And you'll notice that it was both in our warm-ups and our calisthenics. So that just tells you how important I think those exercises are. Um, again, we also have bends and pedal tones. Um, and finally, uh, you might not have heard of this kind of exercise either, long setting exercises. Uh, long setting exercises, uh, most people associate with uh, Carmine Caruso or Lori Frink. Uh, they're exercises where the mouthpiece stays on the lips uh, the entire time through an entire exercise. So if you've ever heard of the Six Magic Notes or any of the other exercises from uh, Carmen Caruso's book, 
those are generally long setting exercises. Our next subfamily of exercises all work on trumpet technique. Uh, when I say technique, I'm talking about playing with velocity and precision in a variety of harmonic environments. So playing in difficult key centers might be something that technique would work on. Um, so first of all, we could practice scales. Uh, of course, your regular major and minor scales are always important to practice, but also trying to work on some less known scales. Maybe you're working on your diminished scales or augmented scales. Um, or your bebop scales, which I have another video on if you're interested in that. Uh, we could also practice patterns. So with one of those scales, practicing a, a pattern is something we can do to work on technique. Um, we can also work on arpeggios. So arpeggiating different chords, definitely something that works on our technique. Uh, and then we can also do articulation practice. Uh, I generally think of articulation practice as something that we can pair with other exercises. So maybe we're working on scales, but then we can work on our scales with different articulations. We can work on playing them all staccato or legato, or we can practice uh, using swing articulations where we swing, uh, where we tongue every other note. Um, really, you can practice whatever kind of uh, pattern of articulation that you can come up with. The next subfamily of exercises is everyone's favorite who wants to be able to squeak out that double C. These are range exercises. You'll notice that most of these exercises are ones that you've seen in, in most of your other subfamilies, uh, but the difference here is that we'd be using the full range of the instrument. So for instance, um, one of my favorite ways to work on range is I practice my scales, but instead of just limiting myself to a single octave or even two octaves, I try to play all of my scales uh, going through the full range of the instrument in order to uh, not only learn to play higher, but also be able to connect my high range to my low range. Um, of course, we can do lip slurs. As always, lip slurs really a vital part of trumpet practice. Um, articulation exercises, as we talked about before. Um, but I do want to talk about one thing, which is when we practice range, I really believe that we should consider rest being an important part of our practice, right? If we're practicing a lot of high notes, we should make sure that we're doing things to make sure that we don't hurt ourselves, like taking regular rest in our practice. Of course, in our practice, we should make a point not to overlook practicing actual music, right? What, uh, what is the point of learning this instrument if we're not going to use it to actually make music? So um, some things we can practice would be doing musical excerpts. This is where you might pull out your Charlier etudes um, or, or your Arben's book, uh, Characteristic Studies. Or you could also, uh, if you're more interested in jazz, you can work out bebop heads, uh, like anything that Charlie Parker ever wrote. And finally, our last subfamily of practice is improvisation. Uh, this is for those of you who want to be um, great jazz players as well as trumpet players. Uh, so some things we could practice to work on improvisation would be um, improvising over different chord progressions. Maybe there's a chord progression to a song that you're having a lot of trouble with, so you just spend some time improvising over that chord progression and learning to, to get around it in different ways. Uh, we could also do transcription. Uh, again, super vital if you are trying to be a jazz musician is to go back and look at the greats and um, take some Freddie Hubbard or Clifford Brown and, and try to figure out what they were playing and learn to play it yourself. And also working on vocabulary, uh, working on different cliches or, or learning to play uh, things that other people before you have already played. Finally, we have one last category of trumpet practice, and these are warm downs. Uh, warm downs are exercises we can do at the end of a practice session, especially a long an arduous practice session or performance um, that helps to reset our chops and make sure that we're feeling good not just today, but tomorrow and the next day and the day afterwards. Uh, in the same way that it's really important for a runner to stretch at the end of of a long run, I think it's equally important for a trumpet player to do a good warm down at the end of a long playing session. 
Um, some of my favorite warm downs include pedal tones. Uh, again, pedal tones are those exercises where we go down below the natural range of the instrument, below that uh, concert E, R, F sharp. Um, those are really great for getting a lot of blood flow to the lips and relaxing them so that we can heal properly. Um, another great warm down is just simply long tones, just low and quiet long tones is another way, great way to do a good warm down. So many of you likely already have different exercises in your repertoire that you like to use to fulfill these different families and subfamilies of practice. Uh, I'm sure many of you already have your own uh, lip flexibility exercises that you like to do and so on and so forth. Um, but if you're looking for some new materials, I do have a list of recommended practice materials in the description of the video down below if you're interested. Uh, down there in the description, you will also see links to my website where you can uh, find an inquiry form for private lessons if you're interested in that, um, as well as sheet music from my previous videos about jazz improvisation. Um, and also you can find a fee free PDF of this trumpet practice menu. Thanks. So now that we've created these families and subfamilies of trumpet practice, and we have this menu, what we can do is we can start considering how we can sculpt our own practice routines based on these different exercises and how much of them we want to do. Um, so first, what I'd recommend you do is consider how much time you have on your hands for practice daily, and then consider what kind of things you'd like to be able to do on the instrument and what do you need to practice in order to, to, in order to attain that. So I have some sample uh, trumpet courses here. So first of all, I have what I'm calling the comeback player. This is for a trumpet player I usually think of as someone that was playing a lot in high school but hasn't touched the instrument maybe in five to ten years and is trying to get things going again, uh, mostly for uh, self-fulfillment rather than for prof professional purposes. Um, this, you'll see, it's a one-hour practice session. It starts with a uh, a warm-up calisthenic joint exercise, right? Some of these exercises we can use that way, where uh, they start out um, kind of on the easier side so that they are good to use as a warm-up, and then they kind of ramp up in difficulty and range so that then they start acting more as a calisthenic exercise. Um, and so for this, we do 20 minutes <coughs> of lip slurs. Uh, as it says, 20 minutes start easy and gradually become difficult. Uh, then we could do technique. We could do scales and scale patterns for 20 minutes. And finally, um, because we will always want to be practicing a bit of music, we can practice some bebop heads uh, because we want to learn some jazz. So let's work out some bebop heads. Some stuff by Charlie Parker would be great. The next sample trumpet course I have here is the lead trumpet player course. So this is for those of you who are really trying to focus on uh, power and range and uh, in order to be able to be a lead trumpet player in a big band, uh, kind of modeling yourself after um, Maynard Ferguson or someone like that. Um, so this is a two and a half hour practice session. Uh, it starts with a warm-up of slur <coughs> of lip slurs, uh, 30 minutes. It starts low and quiet and gradually builds in range. Um, then there's calisthenic exercises in order to develop strength and consistency. Um, so those are bend exercises as well as long setting exercises. Long setting exercises are great for developing endurance at the instrument. Um, then, as I've said before, whenever it comes to anything that is overly stressful, like these long setting exercises or or range building, it's really good to incorporate rest into your practice session. So I say you practice 30 minutes of rest in your practice session. Um, then we get to our actual range exercises. Uh, in our range exercises, I really, as I've said before, I believe that we can practice a lot of the same things. It's just we're intentionally using the full gamut of our range. So when you do your scales, instead of just doing one octave or two octaves, you do the full range of your instrument for all your scales. Um, and then you can pair that with articulation exercises, right? For a good lead player, being able to articulate strongly is really an important element. Um, 
Then for music, we can play lead trumpet excerpts from some of our favorite big band charts. So maybe you uh, pull out some of the lead charts from the Thad Jones big band and you try to work those out. That uh, would be a great example of music that you could practice. And then finally, for a warm down, as I said before, warm downs are super important when we're playing lots of strenuous uh, higher notes or, or exercises. Then we're going to do pedal tones for 10 minutes. Again, pedal tones are those notes below the natural range of the trumpet. The next sample trumpet course is what I'm calling the legit player. Uh, this is for those trumpet players that are looking to become uh, more classically focused. Um, and this is a three-hour practice routine. Um, <coughs> it involves a 30-minute warm-up of long tones, again, starting low and soft, uh, then followed up with lip slurs for 30 minutes. Uh, I remember when I was at New England Conservatory and I'd walk around the practice rooms, I need to hear trumpet players practicing, and I swear it was 90% lip slurs. Um, followed up with technique, you could do scales and scale patterns, and arpeggios, both super important to be able to do super clean and articulately in uh, classical repertoire. And then finally, for we can do an hour of musical excerpts. So. These would include maybe the Arben's characteristic studies, Chalier etudes, maybe you're working out some portions of the Hummel trumpet concerto or the Haydn or, or you know, anything from the classical literature. This next sample practice routine isn't one that you're supposed to use on a daily basis, but is one that has helped me out many times when I found myself a little too busy to do a full practice routine. So this is the I only have 30 minutes practice routine. Uh, and this only takes 30 minutes, as is in the title, and it includes an entirety of just warm-up and calisthenics, right? It starts with uh, 15 minutes of bend exercises and then 15 minutes of lip slurs. And uh, for myself, I found that doing this is just enough to make sure that my chops stay strong day by day so I don't feel like I'm losing something because I didn't get a full practice session in. And finally, for one last sample trumpet course, this is the super killing jazz player practice routine. Um, this is one that I probably did something like this through most of my college days. Uh, and so this is a three hour practice session, it involves uh, a combined warm-up and calisthenic lip bend exercise at the beginning. Uh, again, something I'd hope to dive into in a little bit more depth in a future video is talking about lip bend exercises. Then uh, calisthenics, we do some long setting exercises. Again, those are those Carmine Caruso exercises where the trumpet stays on the lips throughout. Uh, and then pedal tones to help even everything out after the strain of those other exercises. Uh, finally, doing some technique and range exercises, so you can do scale in the full range of the instrument for 15 minutes and uh, scale patterns uh, similarly. Then for music, because we're trying to be super killing jazz players, uh, we work on bebop heads, but we also work on them in all 12 keys so that we can really learn to get around in those more foreign feeling key centers. Uh, and then we can practice improvisation. So we can practice playing over different sets of chord changes. Uh, maybe if you're practicing this way, you might be working on some more difficult tunes. Maybe you're working on moments notice or giant steps, something like that with a lot of chords in it. And then you're also doing some transcription. Maybe you're, you're going through and you're trying to transcribe some Freddie Hubbard or Clifford Brown or something like that to really test your, your chops. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's gotten you to think a little bit about how you can create your own personalized practice routine based on your personal goals and aspirations at the trumpet. If you're interested in seeing more of this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I hope to be releasing more content about the trumpet, jazz improvisation, and music theory. Um, you can also go to my website, link in the description below, if you're interested in getting the PDF from this video, as well as uh, purchasing PDFs of previous jazz improvisational content. And 
signing up for private lessons. Um, thank you very much, and I hope to see you next time. Happy practicing. <laughs>